Uh, Triple M have destroyed the first two games. Absolutely torn it to shreds. Thursday night, have a listen to the call. Won't hear anything better. Last night, absolutely magnificent. Now, just uh, an hour and a half of the best stuff you'll hear on a Saturday afternoon. you got the best in the game. Wayne Carey, no one's ever played it better. VT, the man who's in pristine calling form, radio, television, do whatever you like. Damo, the number one newsbreaker in football. That's your Saturday afternoon. Nathan Buckley going to join us shortly as we have a look at last night's game and everything else that's going on in the magnificent world of AFL football before we head to Metricon for the AFLW final, which will be absolutely sensational. And then we go to Etihad to take a look at Melbourne and St Kilda. It's very right. interesting uh, sort of uh, attitude between the glass and the box. Well, that's what I want to get to the bottom of, Bristol. Now, you were, <laughs> very, in, very you were in the TV box, so oh, I can't no. go to you for this, and Duck, you were too. Oh, I had a look. So the only man <laughs> who was in. in the radio sort of precinct and oh. the Triple M precinct is uh, was Damo. Now, let me just explain to people who don't understand how this works. Come on, Spud. What you've got is you've got the Triple M box... <laughs> And then you got glass either way, and fair dinkum, the Triple M people, it's like you, we're in a zoo. Yeah. Because everyone just stares in like they're just transfixed. <laughs> because all the stars are in there and all the Muppets are everywhere else. And they can't get their head around the fact that they're actually stars in there, so they just stare through the glass. They can't they just keep staring they the whole time. They just stare at the stat sheet. They, they, just, go, they just reel off stats. They don't know what they're doing, Bristol. <laughs> so that's been 10 years of people just, oh, I can't believe who's in there. Just keep staring. But then last night, Damo, it's yeah. my understanding uh, well, that just to the right of the Triple M box, oh, no. you've got an F an AM operator, <laughs> yeah. and, and there was there was a silver haired bloke in there. Who spent the whole game looking at the Ponsford stand forward half because he couldn't see the rest. We got it over. His back was to the glass. We got a good view of his back. And this is a man who would uh, call all of us a minimum BT four to eight times a day on, on any given day. Yeah. Yesterday, did not register no. the scorer mm. when it came to calls. Can and didn't even believe? return a call. No. So I was trying to get out that awkward moment before last night. The amazing, Jim uh, the amazing, didn't want to have it. The amazing thing is that he was sitting in there with his favourite all-time caller as well. So <laughs> that was going well. <laughs> so <laughs> are you telling me, Damo, because I'm, I'm parked at home, right, and I'm obviously listening to Triple M and got the, the uh, Channel 7 coverage, magnificent, Come both on, of them. Are, are you telling me, <laughs> Spud Frawley, yeah. Yeah. Oh. who... Came out of coaching Richmond straight into our box. Who will be listening right we now. We made the bastard. <laughs> yeah. Let's just make no mistakes about that. He came in here and he had his tail between no, his legs. No. and It was dragging him, wasn't it? it was... Left an absolute bloody superstar. So mm. don't worry about what Triple M's done for him. Are you telling me that he didn't even look left into our box at well, any stage? No, to give him his credit, and we do need to get the facts out, he did wander into the box before the programs began. Just to say hello to us. But right. the problem he got with that, and as you know, his confidence levels can waver. Yeah, <laughs> duck, Duck, I was actually quite impressed. Gave him, no, no, it's not, not Duck, Das. Das oh, gave him nothing. <laughs> like, like zero. Oh. I, I was a little bit uncomfortable. Didn't even turn around. What? I don't know. Is there some oh. sort of bad blood? Well, well, Nathan Brown gave that some context too when he left the Bulldogs to go to Richmond. Uh, mm. Rang up all his teammates and everyone said, yeah, well done. Good luck with the future. Das, uh, yeah, well, hung he, up on him. He, he's, gone, he's, he's gone over there to be serious, Spud. He's gone over there because he's uh, <laughs> gone back to the coaching ways <laughs> and... Uh, you kind of reignite the passion of just uh, uh, oh, inflicting duck. some uh, details of the synchronisation of the forward line. And uh, then he's going to sit there and after that, I reckon I'm oh. predicting one and a half weeks, you'll go, what the <laughs> hell? Duck. I, 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 I'm not, and very happily not doing Friday nights, oh. and I love the boys that are doing it, but I, I actually would have, instead of receiving money to do the bro, I would have paid money to be there last night. Well, I, I would I, have just <laughs> stared at Spud and demanded he look at it us. Is, it is the one thing that I noticed last night. I wandered in from the Channel 7 commentary box, wandered in to say good day to the boys and Damo and Das and everyone, yes. uh, Chris, the great Chris Judd sitting there. And that's the first thing I noticed. You, you, you were brilliant. You said, and normally they do. They're looking into the yeah, other so, boxes. Uh, they're all saying hello and they're yeah. sort of perving on everyone. That's and then uh, the first thing I noticed was Spud's back. <laughs> right on, up against, <laughs> and right and, up against and the And the glass. second thing I noticed was Gaz never took his eyes out of the binoculars, <laughs> even though the game wasn't on. <laughs>
He just <laughs> looked straight ahead. Be, there'd be no issues there. He'd be uh, looking everywhere. There's no yeah. the confidence levels there, or not. But it's but I'm interested in <laughs> because I can't believe he didn't have the minerals to turn and look through the glass no. and eyeball some individuals and, and to his left. And he normally coward. at half time he'd venture out and oh, grab no. a party pie or two and just a uh, skinny latte, <laughs> uh, but did not come out of the box no at way. all because he didn't no, want to be confronted true? with any of his <laughs> former that, friends. Is that true, Damo? He didn't come out of the box? Didn't see him. Oh, Apart no. from that initial foray in, and that was it. He just stationed oh, himself no. at that table and did not look You're better left. than that, Spud. And down there yeah. with the Rossi Flegel talk. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you're better than that, Spud. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone in there and they've sucked a the lot. <laughs> and, and they obviously hadn't heard what he'd been saying about the network he's now going to work oh, for, Jim, in the previous three oh, years. Oh, he was I, I, very derogatory. When I was in the box last night, I looked across through a double thickness glass, I admit, so I could have got it wrong, but I think I saw him go up as an exciting passage of play. I think he went up in unison with, uh, with the caller sitting in the front row. I think, he, I think he just about took a speggy over the top of him. They both went up. Oh, I, I need to see this with my own eyes. I don't know how it's going to happen, but I cannot believe that's occurred.